Go ahead, raise your hands to Tyler. How y'all doing today? Good, Good Tyler. Good. Start over here, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Tyler. Um, we heard from Coach Sabin after the stream, and she was asked about leadership on offense, and you kind of pointed the offensive line and the toughness you guys are playing with. Is that something you guys are kind of making a point of emphasis this spring, and you yourself in particular? Definitely. Just with Coach Wolper's mentality, and the mentality of us as an offensive line, like we want to be dominant. We want to be the ones on third and three. We're like, oh, that's easy. We're just going to run behind the right side or behind the left side. We're just going to run the ball. Like, we want that mentality of, man, we got to play Alabama this week. How are we going to stop that run? That's the mentality that we want to have. And honestly, through this through this spring, like, the way that we're playing, that's how Alabama played when I was growing up. Like, this is what I see Alabama football as. So to be able to bring that back to what it was, it, it means the most to me. And that's just, like, that mentality is throughout the room. Like, everybody's trying to finish blocks, push the pile, um, things of that nature. That's just our mindset. That's, that's the mindset of the room. Over here, Steven. Tom, you mentioned Coach Wolford, but just a year or two for him. How has he gotten more comfortable with you guys and you guys more comfortable with, okay, this is what he wants from us? Um, I feel like the best way to explain that is there, there's a method to the madness, you know? Coach Wolf is pretty out there, but I love Coach Wolf. Coach Wolf is what I call a good kind of crazy. You know, he knows how to motivate you, and he also knows how to back off. He knows how to coach everybody. He treats everybody fair, but he, he knows how to reach certain guys. So just being in a room with Coach Wolf and him getting the most out of us every day, him taking the time with us outside, just going to dinner with him and things of that nature, um, we're really starting to expand upon the relationship that we have, and we have a great relationship with the office of line coach. There's less things that you have to worry about. Like, oh man, I don't want to bring this up. I feel like he's gonna, he's gonna chew me out. Like, no, Coach Wolf understands who we are and who we are as football players. And more importantly, as people, so he reaches us on another level. Over here, Mike. How often do you see Seth Murray just run the damn ball off pad? Has anybody else picked up on it more than yourselves? Every day, it's kind of funny that the media picks up on it now because since I've met Seth, he was wearing it. Even when I came on my visit, Seth was wearing that hat. So, um, yeah, but. I, I love the hat because I have that same kind of mindset, the same mentality. I just can't fit it because I got all this hair. <laughs> Over here, Austin. Yeah, kind of based on what Charlie said after the scrimmage, Saban also said that the offensive line group's been one that's kind of taken over the leadership of the offense after the exit of Bryce Young. You know, what do you think the importance of that is? Um, like you just mentioned, Bryce, Bryce is a great leader. He is um, everything that you want out of a quarterback. Bryce is one of, one of my favorite people that I've ever played with. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, there was kind of a drop off on of leadership from when he left. And as an offensive line, as a group that has to come together and play together like no other position on the team, no other position in the game of football, I feel like it was most importantly, most important for us to step in our role and lead and show people how to come together and compete with and against one another. Up here with Nick. Yeah, the relationship that you have with JC that's longstanding, I mean, how, is, how does that help you guys when you aren't playing next to each other to kind of inform what you're, what you're doing? Oh my gosh, like you just mentioned, JC and I, we, that's, I consider the JC a brother of mine. Ever since I got to IMG, we, we've been through a lot of the same struggles, so I don't know if you guys remember or not, but JC and I played defensive tackle when we got to IMG. He was defensive end, I was a three technique. So there was a shortage of offensive linemen. So we both made that transition at the same time, and we both Listening to the time of the game at that position. So just being able to play next to him is really a dream, dream come true for both of us. And just our communication is off the charts. It's like sometimes things will get heated out there and we'll say something that we don't really mean to say, but like at the end of the day, I see a brother like both come together and be like, hey man, I didn't mean to come off at you like this, but this is what I was really trying to say. And then just like you said, relationships and everything in football, especially on the offensive line, just having that relationship built with JC, like we're working on a lot of non-verbal cues now. So just that relationship, it, it makes us so much better as a group. Stay on the side, Tony. After, after lining up against the same guys from the past month, would you be in favor of a potential, you know, uh, spring game against a different opponent? Is that something that would interest you as a player? Um, it's interesting as a player. I saw I saw that come about, but I think at the end of the day, me, me being in my situation, I feel like this is the best competition that I'll face all year. This month, I'm going to be so much better for it because I feel like we have the best players in the nation on both sides of the ball. So in my situation, I'd much rather have that 8 8 game because I know that I'm not going to get challenged any more than I will this Saturday. Over here again with Steven. What's it like blocking for Jason McClellan and just the way he moves and cuts and is able to get up and down the field quick and does the jobs? 
um, it makes it makes my job a whole lot easier. It just, it just makes us look good, you know. Sometimes that we, we hold ourselves to a very high standard, but like I just said, we're playing against some of the best players in the nation, going to, going through spring ball, going through practice. So yeah, maybe Justin Boy will get the best of me one play, but I know Jace will find his way out of it. every week like I was starting. Um, I had no idea going into the ULM game that I would get time that early and then from then on my, my playing time grow. But every day I just I took everything one day at a time but I also prepared as if I was gonna be starting at left or right guard. Over here again with Austin. Yeah Tyler obviously a quarterback battle going on. What are the differences in blocking for Ty Simpson and Jalen Noro with, with their different playing styles? Man we get so many reps during practice I don't know who's throwing the ball sometimes you know and they rotate so they, re they rotate so often, you know, so um, I, it's really hard to get a gauge, but I'm, I'm very proud of the both of them because they're they're not really competing for a spot. They're both competing to get better, and that's that's what's most important here. We're here again with Charlie. You kind of put on the recruiting head uh, this past offseason and helped win some of these uh, freshman offensive linemen. Just have you seen them progress as they go? I mean, I'm so proud of all those guys. You know, it's not hard. It's not easy coming here early and going against 20, 21 year old as a 17 year old. Trust me, I know. And so I'm proud of all of them taking on the challenge, um, understanding what it means to really be a pro. Like some of them are still coming along, but for the most part, they're all pros, and it's really fun to see the see the progression day by day. I'm really glad to have a part of bringing them here and um, adding to their development. Okay, James. What are some of the areas you're trying to improve in your game going into your sophomore season? Going, um, going to my sophomore season, I really want to improve on my technique. Last year, I was just trying to get get adjusted to the speed of the game and how fast everybody moved. And now that I have that in my belt, now that I know how fast the game goes, I'm really zeroing in on my technique. So just really hand placement, making sure I'm timing my punch, and also working on games because in the SEC, you get a lot of twist games from the linebackers up front. So I really just honing in on my technique. How tough has Jamil Burroughs been, especially providing that inside pressure um, in, in the pass rush? Jamil Burroughs, I feel like he's one of the best pass rushers in the nation. I'm excited to go for him to go out and show it this year. Jamil is so quick and he's very smart as well. So like you said, we've been out here playing for a month. So we'll, I'll get my stamp like, okay, since I don't to write, okay, set the slot in this way, we'll do it. So we kind of got to make sure we have the same stance every time. And we also try to not say the play out loud because they're starting to pick up on that as well. So I'm very excited to see him and the rest of the team on the ball out this year. Anything else? All right. Thank All right. you, Tyler. Thank you. I have a good one, Road Tide. Thank you. We'll make sure to get that clip to your mom so she'll like